Hello and welcome back to a brand new Pick Aside stream on BR yes, Live. Sir. Today, we are going to be listing the $50 million a year quarterbacks. A lot of them just got paid. Tua got paid. Jay Love, Trevor Lawrence, Jared Goff in this offseason. But then we got other quarterbacks we're going to rank, like Herbert, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good. A bunch of pretty, pretty damn good quarterbacks. $50 million. Some deserve it. Maybe others don't deserve it as much. But again, you can never pocket watch. Shout out to these guys. They worked all their lives to, to have a moment like that. So happy for them. It just makes me think, why aren't the Dallas Cowboys extending anybody? You got, you, got, <laughs> you got some dudes out here who just got paid. And we're comparing them to guys like Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Mahomes, all these guys that been got paid already. You're like, if you pay today, three years from now, it's just going to get more expensive. It's true. So I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, Jerry Jones, get off, get get your get your butt off your hands and do something, man. You got to pay Dak. That's the next one coming up. But I'm also thinking that's strategic because David Mulgetta, he represents J. Love and Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. he, he knows the market. For Dak is only going to continue to go up, especially if these younger guys get paid. J Love got taken care of first. Now it's Dak's turn. And I think he's going to be the first $60 million a year quarterback that gets mm. paid. To go from 55 to 60, that's a pretty big jump. But Dak was fantastic this past season. Fell short in the playoffs. You lose in round one. He was pretty disappointing in that game, too. He's really going to have to prove it this year if he wants to be that first $60 million guy. Speaking about disappointing quarterbacks, we're going to get into our last <laughs> quarterback on no this list. Great, uh, great th this segment. last quarterback, this $50 should have been, year. I don't care. It should have been Jared Goff. I don't care what the comments have to say. I don't care what these guys are going to say in this chat right now. It should Why? be Jared Goff. You want to talk about giving him absolutely everything. The best offensive line, a top five wide receiver in Amon Ross St. Brown, one of the best tight ends in football already in Sam Laporta, probably the best running back duos, one of the best running backs in the league in Jameer Gibbs already after year one. You have one of the best play callers as well, and you still don't get the job done and win the Super Bowl. Your your ceiling was going to the NFC Championship game with as perfect as a situation as could possibly be, and you still didn't win. Did, we, did you say the name already? Who's I did it. No, oh, the, 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 the graphic, graphic already has it. Oh, the, the graphic, graphic already, already has up. it. So, oh, okay. so, so the crowd already knows who our last guy is going to be. To me, no, this is wrong. It should be Jared Goff. I don't think it should be Jared Goff. I think it should be Tua. I think Jared Goff proved himself in the postseason. Uh, before we get on to Jared Goff, we'll just talk about Tua. For sure. About him. The Got reason it. why he's last is because he was 1-5 in five against playoff teams last year. Seven touchdowns, six interceptions, did not play well in those games. And over the last two seasons, he's 3-12 and 12 against playoff teams. Mm. You know it's a story as old as man that <laughs> whenever the Dolphins – are heading to the end of the season. The opponents get tough. It's the toughest stretch of the season. They collapse. I remember everybody being excited in 2022 when Tua was having a great season and the Dolphins, they had a tough schedule and everybody was like, I can't wait to see Tua prove himself this time around. He folded. He did. Last season, He's having an MVP season. Some people on this table said that he's going to win MVP. At like week I was eight, looking, week nine. I was looking pretty right for a good amount of weeks. Then those tough opponents came, and Tua fell like a domino. It was that Ravens game, man. Wish I could have it back. That's why Tua's last. When we talk about paying quarterbacks, especially young quarterbacks, it's about what you're going to do moving forward. You could talk about Jared Goff having a great supporting cast. Last time I checked, the Dolphins team is. Pretty stacked. Pretty too. damn good. That <laughs> offense is that not That team bad. is really damn one good. One team catered to a non-mobile quarterback by putting one of the best, if not the best, offensive lines in front of him. Talking about Jared Goff. The other signed an injury-prone Teron Armstead. Just let Robert Hunt walk in the offseason. So that's off how season. we're describing <laughs> Teron Armstead now? <laughs> not one of the best, best left, left tackles? tackles. But he's on the field. <laughs> he's injury-prone. He is. And unfortunately, there's a good, probably a good chance he's going to miss 25% of the season. And there's a reason why you have to leave, you have to let Robert Hunt go. Because you have to pay to a 50-plus million. That's also true, but Robert Hunt getting a hundred million in the open market—that's pretty un unrealistic Carolina, for him to man. get resigned. Absolutely, hopefully Carolina can do and, something. And also another part of this is what's what do you think is more likely to happen, right? Because for the Lions and Jared Goff, I don't think either of these quarterbacks play great in bad weather outside of domes or Miami-like mm -hmm. environments. But for Tua, that's basically the entire AFC: Baltimore, KC, Buffalo. If the Jets are able to stay healthy, for the Lions, it's like maybe you have to go to Philly. But but outside of that, like maybe you have to go to Green Bay. But even still, they're one of the favorites to land the number one seed 
or win the NFC North. So they're going to have at least one home game in their own stadium. And then you look at some other teams, like what if they have to go to Atlanta, for example? Not the end of the world. You have to go to San Francisco, a tough team, but it's not like that's going to be a crazy, snowy, or rainy environment, most likely. So that's another thing. For Miami, it's like you're paying a guy you know kind of struggles in these environments. With the Lions and Jared Goff, it's like more likely than not, we probably don't have to go there. And if we do, maybe it's just for one game. Tua is still a young quarterback. He still has a bunch of time to grow and get great in those in his he? deficiencies. Pushing 30? I'm not, no, 25? See, he might be 25 or 26. Pushing 30 is <laughs> insane. Mahomes is pushing 30. He's uh, he's 26. He turns 27 this year. Okay. Okay, he's pushing no, excuse 30. excuse me. Uh, 27 next year. All right, second. So, Listen, still has time to grow. He's still young. Every single year he's been in the league, he's gotten better. Why can't we trust that he's going to continue to progress? I mean, you could trust that. If you I, wanna, I if have, you wanna, if and you so trust far, that. I was one bad game away from probably being right about him being MVP, but that game was so horrifically bad that he had no chance. Shout out to Lamar Jackson. The next quarterback on this list is, is Jared Goff, and Jared Goff is here because similar to Tua, He's a limited quarterback, um, but the difference is that while they're both not mobile, I think Goff has a stronger arm. I think he's bigger in size. He can stand stronger within the pocket, even though he has historically struggled within pressure. Jared Goff needs a perfect situation to succeed. We saw it with the Rams. When the Rams started to deteriorate, he did as well. But the good thing about the Lions is that the Lions have a great situation, one of the best offensive lines. They have a great receiving core. If Jamison Williams could develop into what they thought he could be, it's going to be a boost. Mm -hmm. They have great running backs. They improve their defense. I really just don't understand where this Jared Goff hive came from because, you know, you're talking about Tua and you're defending Tua. I see a lot of people defending Jared Goff. That's true. And, and Jared Goff, I'll give him his respect. He beat the Rams. I think Stafford had the better game that game, I but Jared Goff agree. matched him at least. Jared Goff was playing toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And then the next game against the Niners, you blow a lead. But for some reason, that's not held against Jared Goff. Nobody cares that he blew a lead. Uh, they just care that he got them that far. And I understand it's the Lions. But at the end of the day, when I look at Jared Goff, I look at a quarterback that in his best season is ranks like within the top teens of quarterbacks, like top 10, 11 to 15, to top 15 around there. And I, I think he is a limited guy, yeah. but for some reason there's this huge uproar for him being better than what he is. Like I remember when Lamar Jackson was on open market last year and there was people saying, there's no way you can let go of Jared Goff for Lamar Jackson. <laughs> and God. I feel like similarly this year, when we compare Jared Goff to guys like Jordan Love or dudes that actually have the top-end talent that have shown to do things that Jared Goff physically can't do, Jared Goff is still being a tad bit overrated. And something about the Lions, while they're mega talented, they have so much at their disposal, there's going to be a moment where... Jared Goff being their quarterback is going to bite them, and it could happen within this contract that he got. A lot of people are moved by winning, and that's fair. If you're a starting quarterback in the National Football League and you go far in the playoffs, automatically people are going to give you more praise than others that fall short. Listen, there's people that really are not high on Justin Herbert, who we're going to talk about a little bit later, but I still will regard him as one of the most talented in the league, regardless of the fact that his team has no playoff wins while he's been the starting quarterback. But... There's some time where you have to take a step back and understand what a quarterback is on the surface level talent-wise. We've seen him in a situation that's not perfect, and there was a reason why the Rams traded him away and two first-round picks to get Matthew Stafford, the quarterback that ultimately ended up winning a championship with his previous team. To me, it's really that simple. I would have Jared Goff last on this list because, again, he needed a perfect situation to go as far as the NFC Championship game, and he still blew it, and they did blow a double-digit lead. Hey, listen, no, no, I'm not trying to throw too many shots at Jared Goff. He had an amazing season, and maybe you could say he silenced some doubters as well. But people do overrate Jared Goff, and to me, he would be last. These two, these two guys are in the same tier to me. You know, I think both of them need a lot of help around them. They need some top end talent. They need top end play callers. But when you have that talent, play calling for Jared Goff's purposes, offensive line around you. You could have some success. You know, Miami, they didn't win a playoff game, but they were able to get there. The Lions just had one of their best seasons in, in recent history, yeah. going 12-5. and five. And Jared Goff has the production, right? We're going off back-to-back -back years of him completing over 65% of his passes, 4,400-plus passing yards, and nearly 30 touchdowns in both, in both seasons, back-to-back -back years. When you have this type of production... 
you get paid that type of production, right? You're going to get that $50 million contract. And although there's some limitations there, you also worry, well, what happens if we move off of him? I think that's what happens on both of these contracts. It's listen, you're not Justin Herbert. You're not Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, but we can't move off of you because there's nobody that can replace you right now. So I think both these guys getting the $50 million contract, a lot of fans are going to look at it kind of with a side eye, but in reality, it's hard to replace the production they're giving you. And they try to. I mean, in the draft, they drafted Hendon Hooker in the third round. You know, <laughs> not, not that um, he was the heir apparent, but they had that in mind that we're going to draft a guy and see if he can develop. And Hendon Hooker, who played well at Tennessee, and if Jared Goff struggles now, we have a backup plan. I always will think that that draft where they had two first-round picks was a missed opportunity to get somebody like Anthony Richardson to mm-hmm. learn under Jared Goff. I always think that... Um, I think the good thing with the Lions is that they just have so many rookie contracts oh, yeah. that it's not going to come back to bite them where the Dolphins, all of their star players are up to get paid right now. And that's kind of the difference in their two timelines that the Dolphins have to be, pay guys sooner and the Lions can wait maybe like a year or two before they got to start doing that and getting into that process. Which is why you would put him slightly above or? No, no, th- this just a situation. I mean, I think he's a better quarterback than Tua. Interesting. But I, I don't think it's by that much. I think he's a better quarterback than Tua. Though. All right. Um, Next quarterback on this list is Trevor Lawrence. Okay. And Trevor Lawrence, people have labeled him a disappointment for a first overall pick. It's another one too. Thus it should be far a buff. In, in in his career. The That's thing the about Trevor Lawrence is I really don't think he has had any help. I mean, he's had no help from his running game. Mm-hmm. Travis Etienne really just gets no yards after contact. And then the offensive line gets no push on their offensive line. So they don't have no running game. I thought Press Taylor last year did a terrible job scheming up receivers. Christian Kirk got hurt, yep. and their defense was good. So I will say the defense was good last year. But from an offensive perspective, you know, everything fell apart for Trevor Lawrence. The offensive line, the running game, everything was on him. Where I look at Jared Goff and I look at Tua, there are things that you have to get to and you have to limit before you can just focus in on the quarterback. With the Dolphins, you're focused on Tyreek Hill's speed. You're focused on their running game on the edges with Raheem Moster and A-Chan. With the Lions, you got to get past their offensive line, their running game. They got elite receivers and uh, elite Amon, receiver mm-hmm. Amon Ross and Brown. With the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence is, is just open. He's just open to getting, just handling all the responsibility for his team mm-hmm. that – there's really not an elite guy you have to cover for. There's really not an offensive line you have to worry about. There's not a running game you have to worry about. So all of the Jaguars games are on Trevor Lawrence's shoulders. So that's why he's going to have these high-profile games and low-profile games because he's doing everything every single week for this team. To Won't disagree. To There's definitely a lot on Trevor's plate when it comes to the Jaguars. They were the number one overall pick two years in a row for a reason. They're a bad team. That being said... After his second year in the league, we kind of all came to the conclusion, hey, this guy is the real deal, got a playoff win after throwing four INTs, comes back in the next half against the Chargers, four touchdowns, they win the game. He regressed this past season, and we were talking about it on our show yesterday. You mentioned it. In a clean pocket, he was an average quarterback last season. And against the Blitz, we're talking about one of the worst quarterbacks. Now, that can also go hand-in-hand with their poor offensive line. But, you know, other quarterbacks don't get that leniency. Again, Tua's offensive line is not great, but against the Blitz, there are very few quarterbacks better than Tua Tungvaluwa. So, to me... I look at last year, and yes, I'm fair. The offensive line was terrible. One of the worst offensive line plays that we've seen in the NFL. It hindered Travis Etienne as well. And then once Christian Kirk got injured, it was really hard for these other guys to, to to be consistent. Evan Ingram had himself a solid football season. Calvin Rindley was a little bit better than what I think people saw at the surface. But again, there were a lot of drop passes. Maybe not the most accurate season from Trevor Lawrence. This is why it's hard to put him with these Other guys that we're going to have ahead of him, we understand that he is and does have the potential to be one of the best in the game. But right now, we haven't seen it consistently. I think we just got some heavy hitters in front of him. I don't think it's anything against Trevor Lawrence. Like If you're doing a quarterback redraft, right? We might have done that a few months ago. If we're redrafting quarterbacks in the NFL, Trevor Lawrence is a top 10 pick. Like Without a doubt, his, his youth, his mobility, his arm strength, his touch, he has 
all of the traits you could possibly want for in a franchise quarterback. He just hasn't really been able to hone it all together for a 16-17 game season, plus going to the playoffs. Of course, he has that insane come-from-behind playoff win against the Chargers a few seasons ago. But, you know, there's also been issues like this past season where he obviously wasn't himself, right? We talked about in the full-length episode yesterday some of the issues that he was having, if you guys want to go check that out. But it wasn't like everything was on Calvin Ridley and everything was on the offensive line. He definitely played a part there. But Trevor Lawrence still has put everything together for him to be in this upper echelon the guys we're going to talk about soon. Yeah, I think also the other guys we talk about, uh, for, for the most part, have great coaching. And I don't know if Doug Peterson is a great coach. I think he's a great name. But to this point, you talk about the blitz numbers. You know, Trevor Lawrence and Tua being so far, so far apart in blitz numbers, is that vindicative of who they are or the play caller they play for and Mike McDaniel having better answers for Tua against the blitz mm-hmm. because Doug Peterson was not able to have those same answers for Trevor Lawrence all season long. So that's why I give Lawrence some leniency. I don't give him too much leniency, but I do think there are a lot of things within the offense that just have to be fixed that have to help him out better. I'm glad you said that because the next guy on this list struggled a lot against the Blitz last year. That was Jalen Hurts. Pretty bad. And I don't think it was Jalen Hurts' fault why he struggled against the Blitz. I'm putting that on Brian Johnson. And <laughs> Kellen Moore, we could have discussions. Is he a great play caller? Is he is he average? Is he below average? I think he's average to an above average play caller. I think he is leaps and bounds better Agreed. than what Brian Johnson did last season. And I'm excited to see what Jalen Hurts looks like this year. Apparently in camp, he's been killing it. Not surprised he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league and I'll be honest this is way too low Uh, you put this list together this is way too low for Jalen Hurts this is a dude who has gone to a Super Bowl went toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes he has led top teams in the NFL he's done it with the defense that's been suspect over these last two seasons I get the offensive line's been great the receiving core has been great but Jalen Hurts has done more than his part too if you want to look at fourth quarter comebacks if you want to look how he's done against top 10 defenses had the second most touchdowns against top 10 defenses last year just behind Josh Allen I'm just saying this dude to me is higher than we have him at least one spot higher than the guy we have above him that's for sure listen this is the thing Dells, and you're gonna get me upset and you're gonna get me mad you get me mad because i know the, the guy you're talking about is my guy and I will never put Jalen Hurts. I don't think him. he's talking about oh, no, I'm Mr. Talking about Joe. Well, he, he's oh, talking about that guy. I was gonna not say no, 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 no. Two of my guys uh-huh. on this list. You well, know, no, yeah. Herbert is now one of your guys too. No, no, no. He's not one of my guys, bro. I like Herbert. Okay. I like Herbert. I was gonna say that's the conversation. You can make that argument. Here's the thing with Jalen Hurts. We have to talk about that he has AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, elite offensive line. He's had that since he, he's entered the Philadelphia Eagles. We have five games of the playoffs to go off of with Jalen Hurts. The Super Bowl game was his best game by far. It was a great game. You're still going to bring this up? No, nah, this journey, is a nasty, nasty His first playoff about, game oh against God. the Buccaneers wasn't good. Oh, yeah. When, when His second game against the Giants, he really didn't have no to AJ do Brown. anything. This was before the A.J. Brown got here. Uh, yeah, you're right. But right. they still had Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. You know, rookie, those are rookie, no, rookie, no bodies. Rookie. Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith was good as a rookie. He, he was a nice great player. He, he was very Jamar good. Chase, he, no, he's not. Oh, of he course, solid. but he was a great player. He was solid. Still. Um, second year, when they go to the Super Bowl, the Giants, I mean, he didn't really do nothing in that game. They were they were up 30 <laughs> I, at I understand. Time. I mean, they, the Giants were frauds. We know that. The conference championship, Brock Purdy gets injured. His they have elbow no quarterback. Gets They're up 30 by, yes, by halftime again. They, they didn't even have a chance to be in that game at but, all. But so then he home, answered the question. Doesn't, the Super, yes. Bowl, doesn't yes. the Super Bowl performance just say... If he had to, he probably would have lit up the Giants, and he probably would have played pretty well against the 49ers. This is the thing. The Chiefs had a sellout against the run to where these passing lanes were open, and I think Hurts did play great. I'm not going to – I mean, that game, that was a great game. But we cannot just judge him off of one game when there are four other games he played. And then this past – I just think the other games need context. Yeah, but what about this past season against the Buccaneers? The Buccaneers were barely a playoff team. The Eagles were broken last year. Yeah, but Hurts had – We all saw that. That wasn't just Hurts. Hurts was terrible in that game. It wasn't just Hurts. Hurts was injured. He, he was, was very banged. He was he terrible definitely in that game. banged up. They, he, bro, Hurts they, was terrible they, in that they game. They sent a blitz. They couldn't do anything. I've never seen a professional organization. I watched the Jets for the last 20 years be that incompetent against the blitz. He still had a terrible game against against them. The, well, and the game plan sets you up to fail. For the, fir- fail. for the first half of the season, I mean, Jalen Hurts was on a lot of people's MVP ballots. It was the then, the, so. then the Eagles fell apart, and... He also played poorly during that stretch and in the playoffs in that playoff game. Think he didn't play well. This year? I think he'll play good. I don't know if he'll play at an MVP level. You don't think he'll be top five in MVP voting? If he's there, are a lot of quarterbacks. There's he's a, a lot. He's amazing. If, if Mahomes, I think Mahomes is going to have of an course. MVP. Sure. Oh, every 
J- Joe Burrow, if he stays healthy, I think sure. we'll have a better year. Josh Allen, I think we'll sure. have a better year. I think Lamar Jackson could have a better year if healthy again. And I think Jordan Love will have a better year. Mm. So that's five. So that's five right there. That's five. And I, I smell a polar bear. No, no, that's not. <laughs> you better respect Jordan Love. But that, that's the thing with Jalen Hurts. We have five playoff games, and we now can't just I be realize. like, this one playoff game is what propels him. Just Super because Bowl against Mahomes. It, all right, kind of Super Bowl. To me. After that game, I told you these are the two things that I'm, I worry about with Jalen Hurts. That was zone coverage and that was blitzes. What came back to bite the Eagles this year? Everybody knows is is knows about the blitzes, but he wasn't good against zone coverage last what, year what's either. What's the next name we got, man? What's the next? Name? I mean, the next name is now, Jordan. Love. It hit me. It hit me. This is his guy, yeah. Jordan Love over Jalen Hurts right now. Is definitely strong, but I, I see the vision. Nine game sample size, basically. Essentially. Hey, listen, it was hey, a great listen, it moved games. you. Yeah, no, he's a, he'd be one spot below Hertz. Listen, I'll say this about Jordan Love. This is a guy that was patient, waited for his opportunity. <laughs> 32, true. 32 touchdowns, 4,000 yards in his first season as a starter. He won a playoff game with the youngest offense in NFL history. Yep. This is a similar team that Aaron Rodgers the year before, one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the game, he was not able to to get them to the playoffs because in week 18, they had a chance to get into it facing the Lions and Aaron Rodgers lost to the Lions twice in the year before Jordan Love started. Jordan Love proved everybody wrong. And I hate that when he was sitting behind Aaron Rodgers, it was used as a knock. He's not good enough to play over him. He's not He's not good enough to supplant Aaron Rodgers, even though he was a Hall of Fame quarterback, and there should have been given, there should have been more leeway there. But now that he played well, they're like, oh, but he sat behind Aaron Rodgers. I mean, we nice. were expecting it, right? Whoa. I mean, nobody so, was expecting him to be this, be this good. good. No. I think you're creating and I And I think... Yeah, I, I agree. Where, <laughs> did you just come up with this? No, no. I, I didn't just come up with it. I think that people have been... <laughs> Holding Jordan Love, it, they've been holding against Jordan Love, him mm. sitting behind Aaron Rodgers. Like that we, I agree with. When we compare C.J. Stroud and Jordan Love seasons, I think Jordan Love was better than Stroud last season by a little bit. But people come and say, but C.J. was a rookie. Okay, well, Jordan Love's first year as a starter. I mean, it's hard to... It's, it's hard to... Uh, being in the league is different yeah. from... Being a rookie, this is your first time actually being in the NFL environment. Yeah, I know, but zero expectations versus a guy who's expected to take over a Hall of Fame quarterback. That expectation level was drafted both, number two overall. I there mean, was but expectation. Nobody was expecting the Texans to be this good this quick. That, they surprised Same with the everybody. Packers. The Packers just missed the playoffs. We weren't expecting the Packers to be a playoff team. I mean, the Packers, though, when you look at them, Jordan Love had expectations to live up to his predecessors. How could you, you live up to Aaron Rodgers? That's a ghost. Jordan Love, I would argue, did it this year. Agreed. That's why season. I wouldn't say that there was expectation for him to be Aaron Rodgers. That's unreasonable. I mean, there's an expectation for him to be the next Packers to be really franchise good. quarterback. Agreed. That I hundred percent agree. If he played anything less than the level he played at at the end of the season, they don't make the play. We're, we're talking yeah. about him being a waste of a draft pick, and there's going to be different conversations around him. But the fact is, I think the first ten weeks he was good. 14 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. I thought a lot of the mistakes he got blamed for weren't mm. really on him. Like, we look at the Denver game where they weren't able to move the, off the, the offense at all. But towards the end of the season, he played like a true top three quarterback. I mean, it's not even crazy to say that he was the best quarterback in the league in the second half of the season and in, in, in the playoffs outside of that Niners game. But in that Niners game, I thought he made plays. He made stupid mistakes at the end that cost the team. But they had them right on their heels, the Niners. And I think Jordan Love, just from a talent perspective, arm talent perspective, I put him in a tier with Josh Allen and Herbert and Mahomes from an arm 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 talent. Just talent, I kind of associate that with also you have an amazing arm in terms of strength, but your touch and your placement is still elite. I think Jordan Love has all of that. And I think Jordan Love, what he's making famous right now is the fadeaway throws where he's just going off that back foot. He got that from Rodgers. That I can give some love to Rodgers for. That's something that, that's arm talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, being able to make these throws in any single angle, I put him in a class with the elites of the the elites. And Mm -hmm. him continuing to improve, I think, 
will eventually be better than Hurts. I think Hurts and him is a conversation. It's neck and neck. But if we're talking about moving forward, I think, yeah, I'll just take the guy that got the arm talent. I'm going to bet on the arm talent. Okay. I hope he has a game like Hurts did in, against Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Man, that would be great for Jordan Love. Well, this, well, be he'll, if he get there, he'll win. He'll, he'll win. He'll, he'll win. win. He'll win. Okay. Sorry, he's going to have to beat Kansas City. He could. He beat them already. Regular season, apparently. Again, let's just move on to the next name. Do we want to group these top three together? Because these are kind of the heavy hitters. They are the heavy hitters. And honestly, they, they make sense. What do we got in the top three? The top three, number three, is Justin Herbert. Yes. Fair. Uh, Justin Herbert, we know why he's top three. One of the most talented quarterbacks in the league. Some people would say this is the polar bear. And to me, I would say, go Watch turn ball. on the film. Yes. Jim Harbaugh going to the Chargers with Greg Roman. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I know you guys are not the hound. He's going to have he's going to have one of the most efficient 3500 yard passing seasons we've ever seen. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that actually. <laughs> that there, there's not much talent on this roster. That's my big concern with the Chargers. However, when you do have Justin Herbert, it allows a lot of people to put a little bit maybe too much confidence into your team, but John, uh, Jim Harbaugh being the head coach there, that should put some people's mind also at ease when evaluating the Chargers. But I still worry about this defense. I still worry about the wide receivers, but when we're strictly talking Talking about Justin Herbert, everything on a football field he can do. You want to talk about arm talent. You want to talk about arm strength. You want to talk about getting outside the pocket, improv- improvisation. He can do all of that at a high, high level with the best of the quarterbacks. He's just on the worst team outside of Trevor Lawrence. And he has the talent to be above both of the guys in front of him. He has the talent to do it. He's got to put the production, the I, W's together, but he's got the talent. It's not a hot take. I'm surprised you're saying that because number two is a two-time MVP. That's Lamar Jackson. Love him to death. I'm like a brother. You want to talk like about playoff dropper, unfortunately. You got to oh. talk about Lamar Jackson. However, in the regular season, two MVPs, one of the more exciting players that this game has to offer us. He was sensational this past season, well-deserving of his contract. To those that said Lamar Jackson was overpaid, you guys don't know what you're talking about. You want to talk about uplifting and raising ceilings. Look at the last two seasons prior to this one where the Baltimore Ravens were leading the division. He gets injured. You have the Bengals coming and swoop in to take the division title. But then, of course, now Lamar Jackson's healthy and wins the MVP and is the one seed in the AFC. Yeah, I mean, I think, listen, Lamar Jackson, what he's done the regular season, he should probably be number one on this list, if I'm being honest. Two-time MVP, regular always season. win the yeah. AFC uh, North, winning best record in the AFC, but unfortunately, he just has come up a little short. A you little know? bit short. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised who's not that high on Lamar, given that he has a similar start to Peyton Manning to start his career. He does. And, and I'll tell you what. I'm not going to say that you're wrong. He does. So, Plenty listen, time, people young, like that can, can overcome. Young and man. maybe with that statement alone, maybe I'll become a full-fledged Lamar Jackson fan because history could be writing itself. The number one quarterback on his list is Joe Burrow. I think when he got paid, some people had a little bit backlash towards it, even though not as much as like a lot of these quarterbacks no, on the list. People have a crush on Joe Burrow. I, I will say this about Joe Burrow. There was this topic I seen on ESPN the other day about like who has the best chances to, to – beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. And they all said Josh Allen. You know, Mina Comp said Josh Allen. I, I seen her debate a Bengals fan on who has a better chance um, to beat Mahomes. And Mina Comp's argument was that she used Burrow and Allen's numbers in totality against each other. But this is the thing. And I, I think that Joe Burrow doesn't get enough credit for the big-time games that he has won because we look last year when he came back from injury. He beat the Niners. They dismantled the Niners. Then they beat the Bills. Joe Burrow has faced Josh Allen twice in his career. Last year in the regular season, Joe Burrow, no doubt about it, looked like the better quarterback in that game. He outplayed Josh Allen by a wide margin. And last year, the Bengals' defense was one of the worst, yep. and the Bills were a top-10 defense. It's true. In the playoffs, Joe Burrow goes on the road in snowy Buffalo in the Bills' home environment, and they kick their butts. Yep. I mean, Joe Burrow Handled was by them. far the better quarterback than Josh Allen in that game. Whenever Joe Burrow has faced off against Josh Allen, despite Allen having a better ranked defense, he has been better. Whenever he's faced off against Mahomes, you could say Allen's numbers have been right up there with um, Burrow, if not better, but Burrow has won. And in that AFC Championship game, the Bengals were down 21 and 3, and they came back down 21 and 3 and ended up beating them. It takes the defense to do that, but also takes the offense to go ahead and score and come back from that type of deficit. I don't think Burrow gets enough credit 
for winning big time games. And there is no way that you're telling me if you're heading into a big time environment, Joe Burrow is not number one on this list. Again, I'm going to also say to me, you're creating a narrative. I feel like people love and adore Joe Burrow. They do nothing but sing his praises, especially for the fact that we have not seen many quarterbacks beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, it's been Tom Brady and it's been Joe Burrow. Those are the only two guys to slay the beast. Joe Burrow in big moments, Nine out of ten times is going to come out and play amazingly. Against the Bills, to me, that's his best performance in the playoffs. And against the Chiefs, coming back from 21-3 to go to the Super Bowl. Didn't have the best Super Bowl showing. But again, we talk about all the time that offensive line was one of the worst that we've seen in a playoff run in NFL history. Joe Burrow gets nothing but praise. My one issue with him would be staying on the field. That's the only thing I have to say. You have two full seasons under your belt. In those two seasons... You were nothing short of fantastic at floor, a top three quarterback. AFC Championship appearance each time, He too. is one of the best quarterbacks in the game, but it's getting to the point, similar with Lamar, when he had his back-to-back seasons of not being able to stay on the field. I don't want this to become a stain on his resume, but if we see this trend continue, it most definitely will. Absolutely. The only thing I'll say about Joe Burrow, got to stay healthy. That's it. It's a couple seasons now where he's got a little bit too banged up for me. To recap our list. Yep. Last is Tua Tungabaloa. Next is Jared Goff. Then it's Trevor Lawrence. Then it's Jalen Hurts. Then it's Jordan Love. Then the top three, Herbert, Lamar, and Joe Bro. Let us know where you guys think we got the list right or got the list wrong. Thank you guys for watching, (laughs) and we'll see you guys next time.